Okay, so we've got our rigid bodies. Now we want to bring these rigid bodies to the origin, change them, in other words, add some more detail in the middle, uh, maybe some noise or something like that, and then we want to put them back at this position. Because essentially what rigid bodies are is points with a geometry representation, then this transform that I spoke to you about earlier, this transform matrix, a packed full transforms here, is the point position, rotation, scale, skew of these points so that they can take the geometry from the origin and move it around, rotate it, scale, skew it to where it needs to be to look like this. Okay, so we're going to manipulate that whole setup now. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move these packed primitives to the origin. So I'm going to drop down a wrangle, this wrangle. I'm going to do create matrix. Okay, so I need to create a matrix which is at the point uh, level so that I can use it to transform and basically store the transform matrix of the points. So I'm going to create a matrix. We're going to call it TM for transform matrix. We're going to fetch the prim intrinsic. Okay, which is the prim intrinsic stuff here. Okay, see it says intrinsic there, intrinsics. Packed full transform is the one we're gonna grab. Input zero, which is the first one. Packed full transform. Okay, and we're gonna get it for each point at PT num. Okay, and now we're gonna create an actual point attribute. So we're gonna do a four at, which is a four by four matrix, a TM equals that transform matrix. Now we can see everything's good. You can see here's our transform matrix. And I'm gonna drop down a wrangle, I move to origin. Now here in this create matrix, what I'm gonna do is create an ID. So now this ID is what I'm gonna to use to identify the points so that we can match up the transform matrix with the ID with the piece. I at piece ID equals at PT number. Now we have an ID for each point called Piece ID. The first thing we have to do is we've got to do a twofold move here. So we need to update the transform matrix and then we need to update the point position. So the first one, which is the easiest, let's do the point position. So let's say that P is multiplied by equal to the inverted matrix for at TM. Now everything's moved to the original position of where it was created. Like I said earlier, these transform matrices handle rotation and scale. So we need to account for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the, the prim intrinsic attribute called transform. So now these transforms have a whole bunch of different numbers in, and these are the rotations and scales of each piece. So now we need to set those to the inverse of whatever they are so that they could move it back to the original starting position. So first off, we need to convert this matrix here that we have, this four by four matrix into a three by three matrix. Because the three by three matrix is what this prim intrinsic transform here is. If we try and set this attribute with a four by four matrix, it won't understand what to do with it and it's not gonna work. So what we need to do is we need to make a matrix three, which is a three by three matrix. We can call it anything we want. T3 sounds good to me. And then we need to say matrix three at TM. So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna take this four by four transform matrix and convert it to a matrix three. Then we're gonna go and we're gonna set prim intrinsic. On the first input, we're gonna change transform the attribute by each primitive number. We're gonna set the value here, T3, set. Close brackets, there we go. Let's see if that has worked. If that's not working. So what we need to do is we need to invert this matrix because we've just taken the transforms and we've done them again. So we need to go backwards. So we need to convert them backwards, multiply. So we can't set them. We need to multiply them back into the original matrix. So now we have everything at the origin or back at the uh, original starting position. We have the animation here in the form of a matrix. We can now unpack these, alter them, repack them, and then move them back using this attribution. So let's go unpack. And remember what we want to unpack with it is piece ID, which is the ID for each piece. So we can know which transform matrix goes with which. Just explode here and we can see what we're working with. Okay, so we've got each piece here. Oh, that's cool. Now we've got these two primitive groups called inside and outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage that. Drop down a divide. And this divide we want to operate just on the inside group. We're going to brick of these things. Let's do 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Is that enough? 0 0.02. 
Because we are dividing these things, what we need to do is we need to take this and we need to make a time shift here. And this time shift, what it's going to do is it's going to stop it cooking every frame. So it's only going to cook on the one frame and it won't be time dependent. So then it will just cook once and then add the transforms back in. We're going to say, let's cook on the first frame. So FR start, you can see that's the first frame of the sim, number one. Now you see that little clock has disappeared. And here you can see time dependent, it is. Time dependent, no. And that means it's not going to cook every frame. It'll cook once and that'll be it. can scrub as much as we want, it doesn't do anything. In fact, I think this divide is probably a little bit heavy. So I'm going to push escape and go 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So that's enough detail for now. We can do the noise in a number of different ways, but my favorite is to drop down a pop flop. Explore, explode that view so we can see what we're doing. Turbulent noise, okay. position. I'm going to say add that to the current point position. Connect that up. Connect that up. Let's make this 3D noise and the point position here. Now remember we need to use our groups. So in here we're going to say inside. So this is a bit intense. So let's drop this down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Let's do our frequency is a bit low. Let's do 3 and 3 and 3. You can start to see the detail coming in there. Maybe let's push this up to 2. That's enough detail for us to add. Actually, let's drop this down a little bit. 1, 5. It's just do 1. Put some more roughness in. There we go. Now I can obviously play with this all day. Noise. P. See, we've added the noise in here. A little pack. So let's do our name attribute here, and we should have 103 pieces, which we do. And remember, we want to promote that piece ID, piece ID. Now here's the trick. These prim intrinsics, these packful transform intrinsics are all zeroed out now. What we need to do is we need to copy them from here. Okay, so we're going to move these, these pack primitives here that we've done with the noise, and we're going to grab this transform matrix, and we're going to change this. Okay, I'm going to update these pieces and move them around. You can see here, this is not time dependent, so there's no animation coming in. And remember now, this is a point attribute for TM on here. It's on the points, so we need to grab that. First things first, we need to match this point number with this point number. So we're going to use that ID to give us the point number here. We're going to do that. Well, with a function called find attribute val. Okay, so we're going to say int pt, which is going to be the point number that we want. I'm going to say find attribute val. Okay, we're going to look at the first input. Look on points. We are going to look for piece ID. We're going to try and match it to the piece ID here. Now, if I create a normal attribute here, let's actually do that. I'll create a normal one here for PT. Make this on automatic. And now we have the PT number, the point number here. Okay. This is the point number here that matches this piece ID. So if piece ID here is on 20 and this piece ID with the same number is on point 15, this would say 15. Let's actually change these. Let's sort these. What we're going to do is we're going to change these point numbers. Okay, we're just going to randomize these point numbers. Now you can see what I'm talking about. This is going to random to num. So now this at this fine attribute value is going to look on this point zero and it's going to say, okay, piece ID of 92 matches which one here? So uh, 92 is point 92. Come back and it's going to give you point 92. So now what we can do is we can say we can get that transform. So let's grab create a matrix, for waffle matrix, anim tm. We're going to use the point function, we're going to grab it from the first input, which is also this one. We want tm and we want to use at pt. Now if I make this a matrix here, we're going to see anim tm. There we go, there's our transform matrix. Now we need to do all those things that we did last time in reverse. So first things first, we need to take point position and we need to multiply it by this atom TM. Let's see that happen. Oh, here we go. And you can see it's at the right position, but all the rotations are gone. Template that. Apply this transformation. Let's create that three by three matrix. So matrix three, anim TM three. We want to make it a matrix three, anim TM. Set prim intrinsic. I'm going to set it on the current point. I'm going to set the transform. I'm going to set it by, let's do a prim num. Prim num. I'm going to give it the value that we created, anim tm3. Multiply it back in. Now you can see it looks a little bit offset, but remember because we added the noise here, you can see it's going to match perfectly. Now we can do anything we like in this area here, and it's going to apply that animation. You sim with low res geometry. 
you grab those transformations and then you upraise it here. I mean, I could come in here and do a subdivide on the whole thing and it's going to update it. You can see that subdivide, we can add bilinear and you add in extra detail. And you can cache this out, file cache, I res. You just save that out. Okay, and here you have your high res detail, all your high res pieces with the same animation that you wanted. Let's do a little flip book. So that's how you do a quick rigid body setup with quick Voronoi fracture, simming, and upraising your geometry after your sim or post sim. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some value out of it and you'll use these techniques. I know I do in production all the time. Feel free to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, there's a whole bunch more videos on various Houdini tips, tricks, and uh, explanations. Feel free to drop me a comment down below uh, if you want me to do any other effects or anything like that. Explain any future videos that you would like to see uh, in the comments down below. Thanks very much. I'll see you later.